How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, I'm going to show you how to save a Final Cut Pro 10 library on a shared storage location on your network, such as a Synology NAS or even a hard drive, an external drive connected via USB 3.0 to your router or something of that nature. Now, normally you're not able to do this. Watch what happens when I try to create a library so I'm just going to go into Final Cut Pro, go to File, New, and then select Library. And then I'm going to choose my Synology NAS here. I have a shared folder set up here called Library. And I'm just going to try to save this test library on my shared storage location on my network. Now watch what happens when I click Save. You're going to get this error. Unsupported volume type, choose a local SAN or supported SMB location. So Apple does not allow you to do this, but I will mention that Final Cut Pro 10.3 does have some additional shared storage features that are really cool. And Synology's new Disk Station Manager 6.1, which is currently in beta, will support those features. So we look forward to being able to show you some of those features once that 6.1 release gets out of beta. So for now, let me share with you a quick workaround that we can employ in order to save a Final Cut Pro 10 library on a shared storage location, uh, such as an external drive connected to your router or your Synology NAS, whatever the case may be. I will mention though that Apple does not support this. It's a, this is not official by any means, so your mileage may vary. You'll also need a fairly fast network connection, local network connection that is. So if you're using a wired ethernet connection, obviously that's gonna be the best option. If you're using a Wi-Fi connection, obviously you wanna make sure that Wi-Fi connection is fast and has low latency. So just some things to consider here as well. Also, if you're editing 4K video, you're gonna to wanna to use proxy for sure. In fact, you're probably just gonna to wanna to use proxy period when you're trying to interface with libraries saved onto a network storage location because it's obviously a lot smaller in file size and it's a lot less intensive and everything just works a lot smoother when you're working with proxy media. So just some suggestions if you want to go through with this, if you want to test it out, just some things I would like to recommend to you. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up disk utility here. And once disk utility is open, you want to go to file, select new image, select blank image. Okay. All right. So now at the top, you should see save as we'll just call this test library. And then below you're going to see image format. You want to choose sparse disk image because this allows you to create a fairly small disk image initially, and it can grow up to the size that you set. So it's not going to be two terabytes initially, but it can grow up to two terabytes if you set the size to two terabytes. Uh, the initial size is going to be a lot smaller than that, uh, as you'll see here in a second. So partitions, you want to just select no partition map, encryptions, keep it as none, format, keep it as Mac OS extended, and then size, I'm going to set that to two terabytes. And then for name, I'm just going to call it test library. All right, and now we want to save it on our shared storage location. I'm just going to choose my share folder here on my Synology NAS, and then I'm going to click save. And this is going to take a minute because not only does it have to create uh, the sparse image here, but it also has to transfer that over to the Synology NAS over Wi-Fi because I'm connected using Wi-Fi. Okay, so the library was created. You can see the disk is automatically mounted. Um, so we can just click where it says done and then close out of disk utility. And now you'll see where it says test library right here. It's already mounted. If it isn't mounted, you can obviously just let me just show you how to mount that real quick. Now, if it isn't mounted, you can obviously just go back to your shared storage location uh, where the disk image is saved and then just double click on it to mount it just like that. And you'll see it in a second appear under my devices like that. So now what we can do is open up Final Cut Pro 10 and let's try that again. But this time we want to point to the mounted disk image that we created. So we're going to go to file, go to new, go to library, I'm going to call it test library and we're going to point it to our test library disk image here that's mounted right there so just click save and there you go folks now we have a, a library saved on our synology nas just like that now obviously this is a workaround like i said isn't endorsed by apple at all but nonetheless it does work 
um, and it works pretty well. Okay, so now we're going to ingest some media. I'm just gonna choose a little bit right here. This is a 4K file, and I'm going to make sure create proxy media is selected, copy to library is checked, and then import selected here. And this is importing this directly to our shared storage location on our network. And thus it will take a little bit longer than normal because it has to go over the network to that Synology NAS and we're using Wi-Fi. We don't have a direct ethernet connection. Okay, so now it's fully imported, but now I'm going to go ahead and let Final Cut Pro 10 create proxy media now. Okay, so now we have this video imported. It's created a proxy version. I'm gonna create a new project here so that we can insert this video in the project and kind of check out its playback. All right, so I can scrub through like this. You can see me scrubbing through just fine with no issues. And of course, this is going over the network. Look at that, buttery smooth. Playback is pretty much instantaneous. Now, obviously this is not gonna work as well if I switch this to optimized original, even if I use better performance, it's still going to be a little choppy because it's half, it has to go over the network. So you can see playback is a little delayed. But again, this is 4K video and I'm connected via Wi-Fi. So you should expect that. Let's go back to proxy though. And you can see it's just real quick scrubbing through. Export times are gonna be a little bit longer than your typical export times if you're connected via Wi-Fi. If you're connected via ethernet, it'll be roughly the same, maybe just a tad bit longer on export. But as you can see right here, folks, it's totally possible to have a shared storage library on an external drive connected to your router or on a uh, NAS setup, it is possible. Although you do have to jump through a few hoops and of course Apple doesn't officially support this, but it does work. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.